Hi, this is um, the Soul Whisperings vlog, and we are so happy today to talk to Pamela. Pamela is joining us from Salt Lake City, Utah, and she enjoys helping business owners and entrepreneurs find the leaks in the credit card processing so they can put more money in the bank. She's done a lot of professional development, and she's aligned in helping business owners who are following their passion yet unaware of some of the logistics necessary to run their business. By educating them with proving, proven technology options, they can be more empowered to make better decisions to benefit their business. Welcome, Pamela. Would you like to share anything more about yourself? Well, thank you first off for having me, Monica. Um, yeah, I guess first off, just to understand, so people have a little bit of my personal touch. I'm actually um, divorced twice. I have two wonderful adult children that are 29 and 26. Um, my daughter's happily married with a family and also given me two wonderful grandchildren. So I've, yeah, I feel very happy with where I'm at in my life. And it's, it's been a journey, but it's a good journey because even struggles are lessons and teachings. And so I'm just learning how to embrace those as they come where in my past, I might've avoided change and I might've avoided, um, you know, uh, progress, which is what's required, but you know, I wanted things simple and I wanted things not complicated. And I'm finding now as I'm older that those complications are just no, new lessons and things. So I look at things a lot differently than I used to, which is, I think, a blessing. So, yeah, I've come a long way, but it's a good thing. I love that. Yeah. Even the the hard things are, you know, they really are our soul lessons to yeah. go through and see it in that light. I love that. So I um, swear that you are a gift from the universe. <laughs> um, I have been struggling the past month with credit card charges. Have I feel like somebody's taking my money and I have just been struggling every time, you know, I accept a payment and it's less than, you know, what they actually paid me. And like, I want to be able to accept credit and debit cards for clients because I know it's easier than it, like cash or check. And, you know, I do online appointments, too. And so the only really way is to do it through a credit card. And so when I read your application to be on the vlog, I was like, yes, maybe she can help me because I do. I feel like somebody's taking, you know, my money that I worked for. And yeah. so how, like, how did you get into this and tell us a little bit about it? Well, sure. Um, actually, I was an office manager uh, for many decades, actually, and I've also done print production. And in 2018, I got laid off from a job that I enjoyed. It was, again, I was an office manager. I was running a bunch of things. I felt the importance of people leaning on me, and I enjoyed that. However, um, it's a blessing in disguise that I got laid off because it open to this opportunity to me. A friend of mine pointed out that this company was just starting out and they're all about transparency and integrity and, and actually nurturing their clients and giving them education about payment processing. And again, I probably would have bet thousands of dollars that I would not be in this industry. And here I am loving it five and a half years later. Um, our company has an amazing 91% retention rate. And we're not doing contracts. People are just staying because they see the savings and they feel the, the service that we're offering um, with our in-house customer service, which is also rare. So um, how I found it again, my friend just introduced us to it. And um, the more I got involved in the, the company, the more I saw how um, different it was because again, they are educating uh, business owners. So the more you know about payment processing and the different pricing options and what's available, you know, it's it's empowering to feel like you at least understand what your parameters are and when certain providers are good for you, when they're not and so forth, which we can, of course, discuss as we delve in. Yeah, um, it's, you know, it's one of those things, you know, I'm an author, I'm a writer and like this is the part of the business that like I don't enjoy to be quite honest, like I don't enjoy, you know, having to do all the accounting stuff and having to do the back work of how this all works. So tell me more, like you followed this because you really enjoyed it at first, but it also helped you. Like, I always feel like energy is just, or money is just an energetic exchange, right? And so that's what I feel like. I feel like I'm missing part of that energy. You know, I have provided the service and now, you know, I'm expecting that energetic exchange. 
And so you put in your application too that you really like to, um, let's see, I'm trying to remember, um, you know, building relationships, having a, a positive impact so that people like me can be my authentic self and not have to like worry about that, that um, side stuff in the business, shall I say. Right. Right. So th it's exactly that. So again, everyone goes into business to follow their passions. There's lots of different types of businesses, obviously in the world, but in starting a business and being a business owner, there's a lot of logistics required just to be a business owner, whether it's accountants, insurance, Payment processing is obviously one of them, um, all of these different things. And so what I recognize is I am now in an industry where payment processing, where it's hard for businesses to find real education um, to make valid decisions. For instance, you know, they go to their bank, but is their bank a great provider? What kind of pricing do they offer? Honestly, most banks usually offer what's called tiered pricing, which is not very cost advantage. Um, people have all, all heard about Square, Stripe, and PayPal. They're great providers if you're doing under 10K a month. But once you start doing greater than that, that flat rate high fees are very expensive. Plus, they also don't cover you um, the same. You're actually giving these providers, they're called merchant aggregators. And that actually means that they're controlling your money. They have control over how long they're holding your money, all the different things. And if they are holding your money for an extended period of time, if they're in charge, how do you get them to then side with you to give you your money back sooner? And so there's a lot of advantage and a lot of power in having your own merchant identification number. But to do that, again, these providers make it really easy for people to start processing because they don't go through underwriting. They're not doing a credit check. Anyone can get an account with them. However, through a merchant provider like ourselves, you, you get a credit check. We're actually validating every business to be a bona fide business and so forth. So there's more back end work to verify you are who you are and you're representing your business and your business is a bona fide business. However, having that merchant account also gives you power. It gives you control over your money. It gives you the ability to reach out to Visa or MasterCard if there's problems with your account, fraud, whatever else. So, you know, it's, it's, I kind of akin to it as like buying a car. When you buy a car and you spend three grand on it, you probably just get liability only insurance and that's plenty sufficient. But once you've invested 20 grand into a car or greater, or the more you invest, the more you really want the comprehensive insurance to back yourself up, to back up your butt, to cover your butt, call it what you will, but you want to protect it more. And so it's just like in a business, the more, the bigger your business, the more important it is to protect what it is that you're growing. And again, you know, it's like you said, your business is your baby. You're following your passion. And so I am very passionate at trying to make sure people understand what their options are and educating them. You know, you can push surcharge, you can push your credit card fees to your customer and pay just the debit fee in all states, but Connecticut and Massachusetts. So that's an option, um, you know, and you can increase your net profit by 25 to 35%. That's a lot. Um, credit card processing is the fifth largest expense for most businesses. Now, granted, there's businesses that don't need it. And I say all the best for you. But if you are a business that requires it, of course, there's this, we basically what we are is we're the intermediary from the business to collect your customer's payment and take it from their bank to put it into your bank. And so, you know, it's a financial transaction and it's of course very important um, considering the business always recognizes when they receive the money, cash is king. Once I have the money, it's great. But until you get your money and it's in your account, that's not, you know, you're, you're still waiting for it. And, and so that's why it's obviously very important to have someone that you trust run your money and, and also have the service. Cause again, technology, you know, your phones get outdated or technology has problems. So having the service to back it up is also very important because the moment you don't have your equipment working and you also don't have great service, you're literally at a stalemate from collecting money and continuing your flow of business. So it's yeah. very important. I want to go back up to something that you said earlier, one of those companies I've used. I won't say which one, Respect. but I was so surprised the first time that I used it. So, you know, I've been growing my business now for a year and a half. And of course, now as I grow and I'm doing Reiki classes. So, you know, those are, an, you know, quite an expense, you know, for one person, it's $400. 
So, you know, I sent an invoice. I was working on, you know, trying to get an invoice out. And so I sent it through one of those companies. And I was surprised. I went into my account and they said, oh, something looks suspicious. We're only sending you X amount of dollars. And they were, they were holding $300. Mm-hmm. And they said, um, we only allow up to $300 a month to be transferred to your bank account. And I went, what? And so I had to go in and I had to say, like, how much are you collecting in a in a month? And so I, I think I put 10 to 15,000 just to see what it would do then, right? And then it was said, we will only send you $900 a month. And I was like, if I'm making 10, let's just, you know, figuratively speaking, if I'm making 10 grand a month, you're only going to allow me 900 of it to be mine. Like, what is this all about? And so like, I just immediately like stopped using it. I sent one customer through that, this, you know, transaction process. And first of all, they took $15 out of my pocket and and then only allowed me. So then I was able to get the other 300 because I upped the amount. But if I had multiple customers, you know, buying the Reiki class at $400 a piece, let's say just even if I had just had three people, that's $1,200, but I only get 900. And then I have to wait till the next month. Well, what if the next month I have another three? And then, you know what I mean? I could just see it compiling and then I don't have my money. And so I was just like, this is like, this happened like a month ago. And that's why I say you are a gift from the universe because I was trying to figure this out. And then in comes your, you know, vlog, you know, questionnaire. And I was like, oh my God, everybody needs to hear this, especially people who, you know, we're in the spirit world. And so we want this equality of exchange and not have some, this, I felt like this other person was over here just stealing my money and like, I understand that they have, you know, that they're running a business too, but, and then also, you know, we've got Venmo over here, right? And Venmo has a personal account and then it has the business account and they're robbing all the businesses. And maybe that's how they pay for their, you know, for their, you know, online uh, business. I don't know, but it just, was like, well, wait a minute, it's free if I'm sending it to my friend, but it's not free if I'm a business. Why is that, you know? So, and actually, just so people do understand, I think it's really important people understand that in order to um, process a credit card, there's always what's called an interchange fee. That's going to be the cost that goes directly to, like, if you're using a Chase Bank card as a customer, then it's going to go back to Chase Bank. So, whoever's issuing the card type, charges what's called an interchange fee, okay? Interchange uh, for credit and debit, first off, the fees are different. There's over 500 plus, I don't even know, probably more than that types of different credit cards and debit cards. And they each have a different interchange fee associated to that. So if you're paying for your payment processing, the best cost ratio or the cost uh, beneficial pricing model is interchange plus pricing because what it is is it's the cost of the card plus the modest markup, which in our case is generally 0.25% and seven cents a transaction. And so you're always paying the lowest price on every transaction because when you understand that a debit for most cards is 0.5% and never over a percent generally, why would you ever wanna pay 2.9% or 3.49% in some of these cases for these flat rate fees when you're when you recognize that you could pay one percent and maybe the 025 percent that we pay right so the the difference also is that we when we're running in a management we're managing an account we also have a monthly membership fee and that's obviously to manage the account to help with your next day funding to you know honor our customer support things of that nature and so there does have to be some volume um somewhat significant volume before it's cost advantageous for you to have a merchant account versus one of these merchant aggregators. So the merchant aggregators work great and they're a great fit for smaller businesses. But as you mentioned, when it comes to feeling like you can trust them and know you get your money, there's an underwriting department that's for the benefit of you and for the benefit of the cardholder that's trying to make sure that the transaction is valid, 
Okay, they're trying to make sure that there's sufficient funds in the account. Like once you get your money, you can, it's not so easy to push it back, right? For the customer's sake and for your sake as a business owner. And so you wanna make sure that the, the, the point of underwriting is to validate that the charge is valid, that they have the funds, sufficient funds and so forth. However, just like you said, when you've got some of these merchant aggregators that are processing even more, like I've heard of $30,000 holds for extended period of times. So I've heard of even longer. So the more you're processing, the more you're trusting them to give you your money back when you, when you feel like you should. So it is, they, they do make it very challenging for a company that's trying to grow that of course didn't have the same volume last month when that's the point of underwriting is that they're having to validate it from what you did last time. And so there is sometimes, even with our company, there is sometimes extended holds where you don't get next day funding because we're not used to you processing so much and we're just trying to verify the card and the charge is valid. However, mm -hmm. my team, because we are supportive, like a lot of my customers just send them a copy of the invoice to verify that the funds they're trying to get are valid that are higher than normal. And then my team can help get those funds released sooner so that you get your money sooner. So you know, when you're growing a business, there are times that you may not get next day funding, even though generally we offer that, but that's so that they can validate that the charges and that the funds are, you know, accurate and that you're a bona fide business. Again, keep in mind, these merchant aggregators, they're also accepting businesses to people that are not valid businesses because they're not doing due diligence. And so therefore, I think that's also why they do some of these extended holds is because they are experiencing some fraudulent charges and things because- I mean, if if you were a bad person and you had a lot of stolen credit cards, you would start a fake business and because you, you want to try to process their cards, right? So that's the problem. And so that's part of why there's safety in having a merchant account and also using someone that has a merchant account because you know they've gone through that due diligence to verify that it's a bona fide business. But as you grow, underwriting just tries to understand where your growth patterns are and they keep changing that so that... Maybe you don't have to keep sending invoices to the team to verify your sales because they see that last month, because they see your constant growth month after month after month, if that makes sense. Yeah. So That's they good. are there to protect you, you know? Yeah. There is always a cost to the cards and processing the cards. So the interchange fee has to be paid no matter what. Yeah. And that doesn't go to the processor. It goes to the, the issuer of the card. So the difference in all cases is what goes to the provider. Yes, thank you for explaining that. Of course. How does this align with your soul? Oh, well, because I've seen so many people and know so many people in business, I just recognize the struggle of not having someone that they can trust and, and also the struggle of getting real good information out there. You can look on the internet right now and ask if a batch fee is common and you can find an article from a provider that charges a batch fee to show that it's common. There's just not a lot of regulation. There's not a lot of, well, there's the regulation, but there's not a lot of consistency and places to find facts about payment processing. Because again, it's just a bunch of different providers writing what they say that they do and therefore it's common practice. So for instance, a batch fee is to tell your bank that you're done with the sales for that day and to push the, the money from the customer's bank to your bank. So that's what a batch is. And some people provide an actual fee for batches. To us, that's part of your monthly membership fee. So we don't charge that side fee. But the other thing too, people don't understand is there's usually PCI compliance when it comes to payment processing. Um, back in 2015, Shopco's information was infiltrated and at that time, whoever DDS, whoever's like running um, payment processing, the government, whatever, that individual entity anyway, they actually decided that it was this, um, the business owner's liability to make sure that they've got firewalls, to make sure that they're protecting these customers' information. And so that's why there's a chip reader now, instead of swiping a card, generally the chip reader gives a, an actual code instead of the card number so that it's not, a, the card number's not attached to the actual sale. And so the more they, that we keep increasing security, the better and the harder it is for someone to infiltrate that account. And so if you don't have PCI compliance, processors charge a fee for not being compliant. Say you don't have the firewalls in place or you're not, you're, whatever you're using doesn't have the security in place. 
And so the sad part is, is you've got these processors making $25 to $125 a month extra. So if you look at your merchant account and you see PCI in any way, shape or form, you're not compliant and they're charging you a fee of $25 to $125 a month because you're not compliant. But the mm -hmm. kicker is, is the merchant provider really should just be helping you go through that compliance piece so that you're not paying that fee. And also because it's increased liability concerns if you don't, if you're not compliant. So why wouldn't they want to help them with that? About a year and a half ago, there was actually a statistic that said 70% of businesses in their second year and beyond are non-compliant. And so that's a really sad thing when you know cybersecurity and all the struggles that's going out in the world, it's important to make sure your account is protected because you could get fined thousands and thousands of dollars for one if you're not protected and someone infiltrates your accounts. Because again, you're trying to, the point is, is to protect your customers. So to me, it's a really important job that we do because again, you care about your customers, your customers are your business. You wanna make sure you're covering your customers, but just as much as you as a business, right? It's important. So it does, it really does just fill my soul to know that I'm helping businesses so that they can thrive. So that again, that's not their stress because our company handles it. And then, you know, you can put your efforts back towards what you really do best, right? Your passion. Cause you know, again, if not, you're worried about this, right? And then, you know, then you're not really getting your job done. Yeah. So in your application, you put down what I find very fascinating is 91% customer retention rate because, and you don't do contracts. Yeah. That was, that was like eye opening to me because not that I was signing contracts with these people, but they were making it very kind of just smooth and easy, like click, 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 right? These bigger companies. And so I found that that fascinates me that, you know, it's your track record that validates your truth and that your service is our contract. Yeah. And so tell me a little bit more about that. Yeah, I think that's super important as well. And I appreciate you bringing that up. I'm super proud of that statistic because it does validate the truth. Um, you know, I don't think many processors even know what their their uh, customer retention rate is. And if they do, they're often not sharing it because it doesn't seem like such a stable or great number. And, and again, the one thing I would want to make sure people do understand is if you're signing contracts with payment processors, first off, you're generally not regulating your rate to stay the same because a payment processor just has to put in their notice of the monthly merchant statement that the rates are going up next month and they go up. So the contract doesn't maintain a low pricing rate, which a lot of times people think. The other thing is, is you're usually signing saying that you're gonna be with this processor for said number of years. It's often two or three years. Um, and, and again, contracts are generally in this tiny eight point print. So it's hard sometimes to see the nitty gritty of what you're signing and approving. Um, the other part of that is there's often cancellation fees to leave the contract. And it's like, why should you have to pay to leave someone if they're not giving you the great service or they're not really honoring what you feel like they were promising in the first place? And so a lot of people get, first off, a lot of times people are very driven by price when it comes to payment processing, when in my opinion, they really should care more about service and technology as much as price, it should be equal because they're all equally important. And generally a price will change over time if someone's trying to get you in and then get you to sign a contract. Um, we actually have a policy that's quite the opposite. If you've got a business that's doing, I think it's 25K a month or more, and you sign up with Park Place Payments, if you stay with us for six months or you wish to leave, we'll actually pay you, I think it's $500 after six months if you choose to leave, but you have to do it within the six months and then give us written notice. But like no one pays you to leave. You know what I mean? Our point is, is that we're, we're going to keep you happy. And instead of this whole charging you to leave, we'll pay you if you really feel like you want to, to go, which, and again, you have to have so much volume and so forth. But I think it, it just, it just validates the fact that we really care about the customers and we really care about their business and their success. Um, because again, we're not charging if you leave that to me, that's just ridiculous. That's a scare tactic to keep you stuck stagnant and to keep you with the business that may not be honoring all the things that you feel like you thought you were going to get, whether that's service or the price that you first started with or whatever that might be, or your technology, like you should never lease technology. It's always going to be outdated. First off, you should always just buy it and own it. 
leasing technology is not advantageous, especially in payments. And yeah. so, you know, there's lots of little nuances. <laughs> and so I just like to be a goal and a, and, and a provider of insight. What we do offer businesses, especially if businesses are over 10K a month, we will offer a payment checkup that's free and no obligation. So what we do is we compare your rate, your service, and your technology against the provider that you have currently and put ourselves in those shoes on the particular month that you give us a, mer a merchant statement. And then you can see what the pricing difference might be if there's a value to switch or not. 10% of the time, it gives people peace of mind that their processor is taking good care of them and has their you know, best interest at heart. And yet 90% of the time, we're able to show that we can add value by having them switch. And so it's a great analysis. I kind of look at it as like a Kelly Blue Book for payments, because again, there's not really an, a comparison to decipher how much I'm going to pay in a given month with like this type of activity. Um, and then we, we can assist e-commerce through authorized.net. We have packages that help doctors' offices and medical practice software. We have what's called a practice management bridge which actually interfaces with whatever medical software they're using, again, so long as it's Windows-based, which is 99% of them. So that's doctors, dentists, chiros, ophthalmologists, whatever type of surgical, you know, they feel like they're stuck with the service provider that they have for their medical practice. And again, medicals was kind of a concerning thing because they've got the HIPAA regulations and all these things. And so they want to, they think they have to stay where they are, but again, they don't know what they don't know, and they don't know that there might be opportunities to help them save more. And so my goal is to just educate and thank you for allowing me on your vlog. And the more I can get this information out to people, the more they can at least feel maybe there's options, maybe something is a better fit or or at least know that what they have is a good fit if it is indeed just that, right? Again, because I'm not always a best fit for everyone. And I think that's what I love the most about our company is that we don't swear that we're the best fit for everyone. I, I don't think there's a such thing, you know, it's just who can I help? And, and I love helping the ones that I can. I've saved businesses $16,000 to start surcharging. I've saved businesses $8,500 to not even surcharge, but just to switch providers and come with us because it was a, a big HVAC company that had a lot of volume. And, you know, there's virtual terminals, there's POS systems, like there's different needs for every business. So it's not a one size fits all. It's a matter of let me get to know your business. What's working for you? What's not? What are your pain points? What What's your growth plan? You know, and kind of learning a lot about that kind of stuff. And that's part of what our payment checkup process is, is to get to know you and your business and your needs. And, you know, like if you go to a business and someone surcharges and you don't like it, you're probably not a business that should surcharge because I do think your payments... And your business should be an extension of how you feel, whatever that is. There's no judgment as to whether you like or don't like something. It's just, does it work for you, you know? And mm -hmm. and again, your payments are in a reflection also from your customers of, I mean, it's their last contact of your business generally is making the payment. So you want to make it very easy for them as well, which is why having payment processing is important. Like those that avoid it, I get it. But some customers like, if you don't make it easy for them to pay, they probably won't keep coming back. There's some that are very nitpicky about that. And so you might be missing out on some customers if you're not offering them as many payment solutions as possible. And so, right. yeah. yeah, thanks. So I'm hoping that there might be some business owners out there that are watching this and, you know, whether they're spiritual business owners or not, um, whatever that they're doing, how can they find you? Well, um, I don't know. Are they going to be seeing the video of this as well? Yes. Okay. So underneath my name, you can see Pamela at parkplacepayments.com. That's my email. And that's the best means to reach me via email. Um, of course, they could also reach out to me and, and DM me through uh, LinkedIn or Facebook as well and connect. But I honestly, email is preferred just because then I can connect with them. We can set up a time that works best for both of us and and talk and see what we can do. And again, I just want to be a resource. So if you just want information about payments, if you don't have to run a payment analysis if you don't want, but if you want the audit of your payments, I highly suggest it kind of like a dental appointment or doctor's office. We should, we should make sure we're in a good situation with our payments. Cause if we're not, we're, if you're not looking at your merchant statements, you're likely paying too much, right? Cause 
it, it's just a leak that a lot of times people don't recognize that they've got leaks in their payments, right? Until they actually analyze them and 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 audit them or whatever. So so it's a good practice funny that you talk about leaks. So I was just reading, you know, my last, one of my last blogs was I was talking to a money, money guru, I call her, uh, her name is Wendy. And she was talking about, she um, retired at 41. She's a single mom and she really organized her money. And one of the um, uh, descriptions that this person had done in her blog was, and I'm trying to think it's Kate Northrup. She's from Maine, I believe. And um, she was talking about having water in a bucket and that that was your money, right? Like that you were collecting and that, but there's these, all these holes in the bucket where the money is leaking out and to try to find where your money is leaking out. And this is what, you know, I realized like, okay, I'm losing all this money in my credit card system. Like that that's a leaky bucket, right? Like, and trying to figure that out. So, um, okay. So thank you for being on our show today. And I will put your email in the show notes in the email and, um, our final question is what do you absolutely love about life gosh everything anymore I've come so far that I'm just recognizing and appreciating every moment um, at the age of 52 you just recognize that time is a commodity that you can't get back and so I appreciate that so that anyone that like reaches out to me it's like I, I your time is precious because I know my time is precious like everybody's time is precious and and I think life is precious. When you also recognize that what we're one in 400 trillion just to be born, we're all walking miracles in one way, shape or form. And I truly believe that. And so there's something that we all have to offer and it's up to each of us to, to be open, to learn from each other and gain insight from each other so that we can better ourselves. And as long as we don't have competition or judgment, we're just trying to be better than what we were yesterday, then I think we're gonna go far. And I think, you know, I don't think there's limits on life, but the limits we put on ourselves. So, you know, I, I try to look at it like that too, where it's like, I, I want to grain a, you know, I'm, I'm looking to to build a legacy because there's so many things that I'd like to do with nonprofits and, and building nonprofits and like adoption people. I feel sorry for the 18 year olds that are getting kicked out of the, the government once they turn 18. It's like, well, they're still in high school. How could they be, how is the state not taking care of them? It was already bad enough that they didn't have, parents you know what I mean that chose them so to me there's just a lot of different things in life that I'd love to to put money to and and what I'd love doing and my goal is to find different heart-centered people that that agree that money in the right hands makes the world a better place so that I can do more of that and build more of that and my ideal client is someone that I'd want to have lunch with or that I enjoy being with and talking to because that's the kind of people I want to help build their money and save their money and, you know, and better the world. Right. So uh, that's kind of my take. It's just, you know, life is precious and we all are precious and, and just making the most out of every moment. Cause it's not always easy, but the hard times are usually the biggest lessons. And I used to shy away from those lessons and I used to shy away from change. And so I recognize the people that are like, Oh, I don't want to change my process. Or it's like, I get it when you get sick enough of it or when you, you know, I mean, that's kind of the point timing is everything. Um, but I'd love to help those that are ready because I can only help those that are ready, right? Just like the rest of us, like that's life in itself too. It takes us helping ourselves to help others, right? So yeah, it's just a beautiful thing. And and time is too connected to the money, right? Like, you know, like how much time do I work to get the, you know, to get that exchange? And that's what was our conversation a couple of weeks ago in a different blog is that, you know, it's your life, your money or your life. And yeah. so I feel like I'm, you know, I'm savoring some, you know, because I've spent this time working, but then they took some of my money. I feel like they took some of my life force energy. Right. So I love the, you know, that time is precious and I, I can totally relate to you as far as like, you know, being over 50 and going, Oh, wait, <laughs> And not much time left here. And oh my goodness, I didn't appreciate it all those other 50 years. So I can really relate to that. Yeah. Well, thank you for coming on today. And I hope some people enjoyed this conversation and I will definitely be reaching out to you. 
I look forward to talking to you and I look forward to giving anyone advice or just to be your resource and advocate to make sure that you feel good about the direction you're going, whatever direction that is. So thank you. Awesome. Thank you, Pamela. Have a good day.